August 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day he was born. Job spoke up and said, Let the day on which I was born perish, and the night that said, A man has been conceived. That day let it be darkness. Let not God on high regard it, nor let light shine on it. Let darkness and the deepest shadow claim it. Let a cloud settle on it. Let whatever blackens the day terrify it. That night let darkness seize it. Let it not be included among the days of the year. Let it not enter among the number of the months. Indeed, let that night be barren. Let no shout of joy penetrate it. Let those who curse the day curse it, those who are prepared to rouse Leviathan. Let its morning stars be dark and let it wait for daylight but find none, nor let it see the first rays of dawn. Because it did not shut the doors of my mother's womb on me, nor did it hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth, and why did I not expire as I came out of the womb? Why did the knees welcome me, and why were there two breasts that I might nurse at them? For now I would be lying down, and I would be quiet. I would be asleep, and then at peace. With kings and counselors of the earth who built for themselves places now desolate, or with princes who possess gold, who filled their palaces with silver. Or why was I not buried like a stillborn infant, like infants who have never seen the light? There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. There the prisoners relax together, they do not hear the voice of the oppressor. Small and great are there, and the slave is free from his master. Why does God give light to one who is in misery, and life to those whose soul is bitter? To those who wait for death that does not come and search for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice even to jubilation and are exultant when they find the grave, why is light given to a man whose way is hidden and whom God has hedged in? For my sign comes in place of my food and my groanings flow forth like water. For the very thing I dreaded has happened to me and what I feared has come upon me. I have no ease, I have no quietness. I cannot rest. Turmoil has come upon me. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, If someone should attempt a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can refrain from speaking? Look, you have instructed many. You have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled, and you have strengthened the knees that gave way. But now the same thing comes to you and you are discouraged, it strikes you, and you are terrified. Is not your piety, your confidence, and your blameless ways your hope? Call to mind now who, being innocent, ever perished, and where were upright people ever destroyed? Even as I have seen, those who plow iniquity and those who sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. There is the roaring of the lion and the growling of the young lion, but the teeth of the young lions are broken. The mighty lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. Now a word was secretly brought to me, and my ear caught a whisper of it. In the troubling thoughts of the dream in the night, when a deep sleep falls on men, a trembling gripped me, and a terror, and made all my bones shake. Then a breath of air passes by my face. It makes the hair of my flesh stand up. It stands still, but I cannot recognize its appearance. An image is before my eyes, and I hear a murmuring voice. Is a mortal man righteous before God, or a man pure before his Creator? If God puts no trust in his servants and attributes folly to his angels, how much more to those who live in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust? who are crushed like a moth. They are destroyed between morning and evening. They perish forever without anyone regarding it. Is not their excess wealth taken away from them? They die yet without attaining wisdom. Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? For wrath kills the foolish person and anger slays the silly one. I myself have seen the fool taking root but suddenly I cursed his place of residence. 
His children are far from safety, and they are crushed at the place where judgment is rendered, nor is there anyone to deliver them. The hungry eat up his harvest, and take it even from behind the thorns, and the thirsty swallow up their fortune. For evil does not come up from the dust, nor does trouble spring up from the ground, but people are born to trouble, as surely as the sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God, and to God I would set forth my case. He does great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends water on the fields. He sets the lowly on high, that those who mourn are raised to safety. He frustrates the plans of the crafty so that their hands cannot accomplish what they had planned. He catches the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the cunning is brought to a quick end. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope about in the noontime as if it were night. So he saves from the sword that comes from their mouth, even the poor from the hand of the powerful. Thus the poor have hope and iniquity shuts its mouth. Therefore, blessed is the man whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he also bandages. He strikes, but his hands also heal. He will deliver you from six calamities. Yes, in seven, no evil will touch you. In time of famine, he will redeem you from death and in time of war from the power of the sword. You will be protected from malicious gossip and will not be afraid of the destruction when it comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine and need not be afraid of the beast of the earth. For you will have a pact with the stones of the field and the wild animals will be at peace with you. And you will know that your home will be secure. And when you inspect your domains, you will not be missing anything. You will also know that your children will be numerous and your descendants like the grass of the earth. You will come to your grave in a full age, as stacks of grain are harvested in their season. Look, we have investigated this so it is true. Hear it and apply it for your own good. God, I'm still kind of laughing at your timing of having me record Job right when I am questioning why things are happening in my life. Your sense of humor in my life cracks me up. So we have Job who is like, it would be better if I wasn't even born. It's not that he's suicidal. He just thinks, gosh, it would just be better if, if I hadn't even started down this path. Uh, and then his friends, <laughs> not sure I need friends like this, his friends uh, step up and Eliphaz is the first to speak and we'll actually hear from all of them eventually um, a couple of times. And Eliphaz says, oh, I'm so sorry. And then that's cut short and he launches into what did you do to cause this? <laughs> So what is amazing, God, and so amazing about your timing is the situation I'm in right now is confusing. Um, and what I love is when I come to you and I, I just say, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Just show me the truth. Show me your way. Show me what I need to learn from the situation. I will be obedient. Just show me. And amazingly, every time I humble myself before you like that, you do. And very clearly, um, I can hear your voice in my life. Uh, and it's so amazing. We've talked about this before. There's so many ways that I hear from you. Um, sometimes it's through email. Sometimes it's on Facebook. Sometimes it's through a friend. Sometimes it's truly just reading the Bible and, and certain verses. Um, and you know that that hasn't always been true, that that's a relationship of hearing the one I love and understanding his voice that's come over time. But ever since the situation happened yesterday, um, and I've been baffled by it because all of the things and all the statements I made, I knew were true. I, biblically, I could back them up, but I was still kind of lost in the fact that the other person told me I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, one of the first things that you put into my world 
in my answer to my question of, gosh, I totally know that the Bible says this. I can back it up biblically, but somebody else is telling me I'm wrong and I'm a little bit confused because for the most part, I respect their opinion. And lo and behold, again, every time I just come to you and just lay it all at your feet and just say, God, I just don't even know what to do with these. You send me Bible verses. Well, this time you did. Two of them. The first one from Ephesians 5, 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And the second one, as though that wasn't strong enough to make it really clear to me what was going on. Psalms 1, 1 through 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Okay, crystal clear, got it. But that wasn't enough. Then you sent amazing people into my life who, before I even had a chance to explain what had happened, they had those exact same words of wisdom from you uh, to share with me. So I knew that you had sent them into my life. It was just incredible. But we are always in these situations where we honestly believe that if something, quote, bad has happened to us, we've done something to deserve it. Now, let's be really clear. You and I both know I'm not perfect and I mess up all the time. Let's be really, really clear about this. But in this situation, I was obedient to your word. I kept going back to your word. I kept going back to you. I kept praying about it. I kept listening to you. Uh, and I didn't veer off of those. Um, in fact, it was amazing going through this because I have a whole notebook just filled with Bible verses you kept showing me and showing me and uh, kind of walking my path through this. So now today I'm sitting in the same spot. Job is. No big surprise because you're having me record Job right now. Job is baffled at the situation he's in. Maybe I shouldn't have even been born. I'm not at that spot of maybe I shouldn't have been born. I usually go the other route um, with the disease I have, the autoimmune disease I have. Depression is one of the nice little symptoms I have to deal with. So I would tend to go the other route. I wish I didn't live. Um, thankfully, in this situation, it hasn't happened. But for like Job, that's the situation I would go in. And then he's got friends who come in and say, what did you do? What did you do to deserve this? And the amazing thing is, God, you sent people into my life last night and today, uh, multiple people who came into my life without even hearing a single thing and said pretty much exactly what you're saying here. According to the Bible, this is exactly what needs to happen you followed that. You were obedient. But yet, there's still that piece of guilt. Right? There's still that piece that is sits in the back of our head of, I'm just going to run down this list one more time. Because there's got to be something here as to why something bad happened. Um, okay, well, I guess I, I guess I could have done this a little bit better and... Maybe I shouldn't have said that particular group of words. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this. And we start second guessing ourselves. And the whole book of Job is you saying, no, I am God. I'm in control. I am sovereign. And you need to understand that. There is justice, but it's my justice. And it's not going to make sense to you most of the time. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're being punished when you didn't do anything wrong. Boy, I remember that growing up as a kid with three other brothers and sisters. Sometimes you're going to be punished for things you didn't do. Or it's going to feel that way to you. You're also going to receive an abundance of blessings. And most people looking in from the outside, Janelle, are going to think you don't deserve those. And hopefully you don't think you deserve those. Because I want you to be thankful for them. But through all of this that I'm doing, I'm doing this to glorify me. I'm allowing what is happening to teach you, Janelle, to guide you, Janelle, to give you what is best, Janelle. But ultimately, it glorifies me. And then you, and then you put it back in my lap. 
And Janelle, didn't you ask for that? Didn't you say I'm laying everything at your feet? Teach me your will and you'll be obedient. God, I want my life to reflect you. I want to glorify you. And it's so amazing because usually when I'm in these types of situations and I'm second guessing myself and sometimes I even have friends, so-called friends who come in to my life like Job has and said, no, obviously you did something wrong. You just don't see it. Uh, and that's why this bad thing happened. And here's the incredible part, God. I came to you knowing that, that I was going into a bad situation. I laid it at your feet and I said, if this happens, then I know it's not of your will. If this happens, I know it's of your will. And then let's take it from there because I want to be obedient to you. I want to learn from the situation and I want it to glorify you. And going into the situation and it wasn't my choice, the decisions that were made. It was choices that were not of your will. And instantly there was this amazing peace in my heart. There was this amazing calmness in my heart. Usually there would have been agitation and frustration and pain and hurt and ah, a plethora of, of emotions. And there wasn't. Now, this would be a rare occasion that I actually get something right. <laughs> laying something at your feet. Because um, most of the time I get this wrong. Most of the time my obedience isn't there. My desire to have my will supersedes your will. But this so perfectly matches up with what we're reading today with Job. He has gone through something traumatic. What I'm going through is traumatic, but it's not anywhere close to what Job's going through by any stretch of the imagination. My response to you needs to be to glorify you. Amazingly, Job's response was to glorify and worship you. That's what you call us to do. You don't call us to do all of these other choices that we make. Um, his friend right now is at towards the end of the reading is asking him to acknowledge that he did something wrong against you. And then he'll come back into your good graces. And Job, as we're about to hear in the next section, says, mm, no. <laughs> I promise you guys, his three friends, I promise you guys, I haven't done anything wrong. Really? Have you searched here? Are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? No, really, I haven't done anything wrong. And yet God is still punishing me. What an amazing couple chapters to read, God. Because our version of justice here on earth is not your version of justice. We don't understand your version of justice and we're not called to understand your version of justice. We're called to be obedient. We're called to glorify you. That's what we're called to. We're not called to understand or provide approval for your sense of justice. You know, there's, there's definitely an arrogance here that we have to approve who and how and what you do justice with. But last time I checked, this was your world you created. Um, you created all of us. You created all the things in this world. You created the order of how things work. And we get to play by your rules. And one of those is your, is your sense of justice. My first reaction, God, honestly, was, what have I done? I don't understand this. What have I done? I was obedient. I was obedient. I was obedient. I was obedient. And you took this and you took this and you took this and you took this. Why? And you came back and you just showed me this amazing power and control that you have of, but that's not for you to worry about, you know. There is nothing here that says you get to accept or reject or question what I am doing. 
I am your Lord. I will take care of you. Do you trust me that I will take care of you? That I know what is best for you? Because everything else falls in line underneath that. Do you trust me to know what's best for you, Janelle? And God, as soon as I answered yes to that request from you, my heart has been peaceful. Today has actually been joyful. My day has been filled with amazing people who have come in to help me and, and who people I got to go and help and, and talk about, about you to. None of that would have happened if I became selfish and went inward. Well, if I did this and God does this and, and well, this would happen. If I had obsessed about this and let my emotions run all over the place and questioned whether you were doing what you were supposed to be doing. All of the amazingness that happened today wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have got to experience those. I wouldn't have got to tell other people about you. So yeah, I know that I'm stubborn. I know I'm thick headed. I know I make mistakes all the time. But I'm starting to, to connect those dots just like Job did. It's not up to us to approve or respect or acknowledge how you provide justice to this world. It's not up, up to us to question any of that. What you have called us to do is to trust you that you know what is best for us. To be obedient to that. And make sure that what we're doing glorifies you. And God today glorified you. Getting to talk to people about you and sharing love with other people. And being kind to other people. Those are some of my favorite days and I got to experience this today in the midst of a time when I would usually just be traumatized and upset and crying and I didn't do it. <laughs> you did it. You took my heart and you calmed it. You brought peace into my life and you said, I've got this. I will take care of this situation. I will come in and handle it and the justice I need to take care of, I will take care of it. But you need to go do what I've asked you to do, Janelle. And God, I can't thank you enough for that. I woke up this morning with so much peace in my heart. I slept well last night for the first time in a long time. And my cheeks hurt today just from smiling so much. And seeing the joy in so many people's faces as I got to talk to them about you. That's what we're called to do. We're called to glorify you, God. In our actions, and our thoughts, and our deeds. See, I'm, I'm starting to get it. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'll always get it right. In fact, more often than not, I'll get it wrong. But sometimes... All of the things that you put in my life, I actually am starting to just a smidgen understand them. <laughs> God, I just pray that the people listening to this video today, that if they're going through a hard time, that their response to you is to glorify you. Not this selfish inward thing. Well, what did I do? And if I do this, will God approve? And if I do this, will God um, discipline me? And what does this look like? You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. So we didn't have to go through that psychotic self-talk. That selfish whirlwind that we create in our lives. You said, I've got this. I have you. I love you. I promise to take care of you and always give you what is best for you. But you've got to trust me. And God, for everyone listening today, I just pray that they understand that trust piece. Because here on earth, there's not a lot of people we can trust. We are damaged and hurt people that bump up against damaged and hurt people. And there's not a single relationship here on earth that's perfect. But you are. And there's never going to be a lapse in that judgment of making sure that you always give us what is best for us. 
of always wanting to give us hope and to prosper us. God, I pray that we can be obedient to that and realize that you're not like our earthly relationships, that you love us beyond anything that we can even imagine. And you have promised repeatedly to always give us what is good for us according to your will. God, I'm not sure why you do this. I'm not sure I understand, nor will I ever understand how big your love is for us because we mess up and totally don't deserve anywhere close to the love you give us. But I am so thankful that you take the time to patiently teach me this process. Teach me how to trust you. Teach me how to glorify you. Teach me to turn my life over to you so I can do what you need me to do while I'm here on earth. I realize that in the big picture that I don't get, a lot of times it's going to feel like you are being mean to me. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it. But in those moments, I need to be like Job and I need to worship you and I need to praise you and I need to glorify you. Because in the big picture, you have promised us the best. That you love us so much that you always want want what is best for us. I will never be able to thank you enough. Not only for today and the joy that today has brought me. But I'm so thankful that today glorified you. And today was a good day that was all about you. And I'm thankful that today wasn't all about me, me and the drama surrounding me. God, I thank you for the people that you sent into my life today. Not only those you sent with amazing messages of confirmation, but also all those incredible people you sent into my life that I could talk to them about you. It was truly an amazing day. God, we thank you for these powerful stories They emulate so much of the life that we live and the relationship that we constantly are working on to seek with you. God, we know that you are right there beside us holding our hands. It's us who gets this relationship wrong all the time. I just ask that you continue to loudly remind me that when it feels like discipline and discipline in my world unwarranted, that I don't get a right to say anything about that. It's not up to me. My privilege is glorifying you and being obedient to you. Remind me that that's what I get to do. In your son's name, I pray. Amen.